Almost a year ago, I was working on a project with the Essex Wildlife Trust, doing wildlife photography, funnily enough, as part of my uni degree. I soon realised that the equipment I had just wasn't adequate and I had to get something else. So I had a look at the Nikon 80-400 and because of the price, that's the one I went for. I couldn't borrow one from uni, so I had to buy one with the intentions of selling it straight afterwards. However, I've kept it and a year on, I really like using it. It's a really good lens. It is professional. Um, and that shows in the images. It's got nice rubber grips on the outside. I don't think it's weather sealed, but it's very, very sturdy. It does have VR. It has three options. On constantly, on just on the shutter button and off. On constantly is obviously for video and just on the shutter button is for single images. Both the VR and the autofocus are incredibly loud. Taking into consideration that this is a telephoto lens, the speed of the autofocus is actually pretty good. However, my camera doesn't have a focus motor, so I have to manually focus, which means I often miss shots. For these shots, I was able to borrow a Nikon D600, which is a full frame camera, which enables me to autofocus as well. And it gives really nice bokeh. Um, obviously, you've got the compression of the telephoto lens there as well. Even wide open at 400mm, there is absolutely no lack of sharpness or detail. I took this video in manual focus so that you didn't get the noise of the focus motor through the video. Um, there is noise of the wind obviously, but the vibration reduction also makes quite a lot of noise in video if you're not using an external microphone. Um, and the vibration reduction itself for video it doesn't keep it that still. Even um, on a tripod it will still have vibrations in there. Moving on to price, I purchased mine from mpb.com. Um, they sell used equipment basically. Um, I've, I bought mine for less than that, it was a little over £400. I had the intentions of selling it straight afterwards, which would have worked out cheaper than renting it for the amount of time I was going to use it, but it's been almost a year now and I've still got it and I wouldn't want to live without it. Bearing in mind that new this lens is about fifteen or £1600, I think I got a pretty good deal. If you want all the Technical information, um, it's got 17 lens elements in 11 groups. Minimum aperture is f32. And something quite important to some people is the minimum focus distance, which is 2.3 meters, which is a long distance. Um, you can't get close to your subject at all, or if you're too close to your subject, you can't move back far enough to get it in frame um, to do kind of macro pictures. Um, I have used it for macro photography anyway, you just have to make sure you're not in a tight space, basically, which you're probably not if you're using this lens. Comparing that to the autofocus version, um, so it's a bit heavier, um, that's not really important. What is important is the difference in price. So these, a well-used one, and that is a very used condition, um, start from 854 pounds and go sort of up to nearly 1400 pounds. The price difference between the two is just ridiculous it's almost cheaper to kind of upgrade your camera to get a camera that has autofocus built in so that you don't have to get the autofocus version of the lens. If you're interested in visiting any of the places I've shown in this video, don't forget to look at Essex Wildlife Trust website. Otherwise, subscribe to my channel and see you next time.